Welcome to the final video on working on alebrijes. We're going to be painting this one. So our first step is to paint a base coat. So that's going to be the primary color that your creature is going to be. In this case, mine's kind of a reddish brown and then it's going to kind of fade to a brighter red and then an orange on his belly, kind of like a flame would look. So when you're making a base coat, you need to completely cover your sculpture and you don't want to see any of the newspaper through it. So you may need to paint a few coats depending on the color. For example, if you're using yellow, yellow is really transparent. And so sometimes you need to add white to it so that it makes it a little more opaque or meaning it's not see-through and you'll probably need to paint a few coats over the top of that. Remember when you're painting, you want to choose the right brush for the job. So if you're painting a large area, obviously you're going to want to use a bigger brush, but if you're painting a more detailed area, a smaller brush would be a better choice. So you may have noticed I painted over the eyes in this picture. Um, don't worry too much about that because the plastic of the eyes, you can easily scrape the paint off. It comes right off or if it is wet and you're really worried about it, you can just wipe it off or get your brush wet and wipe it to keep it clean. So no worries about getting paint on those because it will come off. If you used googly eyes, there might be a bit more of a problem. So as you can see, I am adding some brighter red next to my darker red. And those two colors are kind of getting blended together. If your paint is wet enough, they should blend quite easily together to give you kind of some variation of colors. So when you're blending paint, you're going to move back and forth between your two wet colors, and that's going to blend it nice and smooth. So usually when I'm blending my paint, I start with the darker color. So in this one, I start with the darker color, and then I went down about halfway. Then I went back up with the lighter color and kind of worked over the top of it. Now, if your paint is starting to dry, that's not going to work very well. So you have to do it while your paint is still quite wet. And then if you're using a light color, like for example, we have yellow up there. Um, yellow is really light. So you're going to have to put that on kind of heavy and probably start with that when you're working with it. Otherwise, it's just going to turn into the red. All right, now we're going to talk about details just a little bit. Um, obviously, if you are painting a really light color over a dark color, you'll have to put a couple coats on there just to cover that up. And then, um, generally i found that when you put down certain kinds of details, they tend to look a little bit better when you outline them. 
So I'm actually going to be outlining all these spots that I just painted with some black and that's going to make it kind of stand out just a little bit more and give it a little more definition. But they are kind of like, um, well, my animal is a serval, so it's kind of like a cheetah in that it's a large cat with spots. Um, so the spots are kind of referencing those, as are the ears. So here you can see I'm outlining the spots with some black. These are kind of more of a, a looser mark. They aren't really precisely outlined. And we're going to get a little more detailed here. I'm going to be painting around the eyes and like I had said earlier if you do get paint on the eyes um, you can wait for it to dry and scrape it off or uh, what I do here is I just get my paintbrush kind of damp and push the paint down kind of like if I were painting my nails and I got some paint on my finger I could use a bamboo stick and push it back. And I feel like alebrijes really use a lot of dots and kind of stripes, so I'm adding those around his brow, just a slightly brighter yellow over the darker yellow, and then some black spots around his eyes just for a little extra definition. You can outline those if you really want them to stand out, or they could be a little more subtle like these are. And the key to making a good traditional alebrije is using lots of colors and patterns. So here is our fierce beast. We've named him Pickle. So, Pickle the Beast. Thanks for watching.